Louis Pasteur was a French biologist, microbiologist and chemist renowned for his discoveries of the principles of vaccination, microbial fermentation, and pasteurization. He is remembered for his remarkable breakthroughs in the causes and prevention of diseases, and his discoveries have saved countless lives ever since. He reduced mortality from puerperal fever, and created the first vaccines for rabies and anthrax. His medical discoveries provided direct support for the germ theory of disease and its application in clinical medicine. He is best known to the general public for his invention of the technique of treating milk and wine to stop bacterial contamination, a process now called pasteurization. He is regarded as one of the three main founders of bacteriology, together with Ferdinand Cohn and Robert Cook, and is popularly known as the father of microbiology. Pasteur was responsible for disproving the doctrine of spontaneous generation. He performed experiments that showed that without contamination, microorganisms could not develop. Under the auspices of the French Academy of Sciences, he demonstrated that in sterilized and sealed flasks nothing ever developed, and in sterilized but open flasks microorganisms could grow. Although Pasteur was not the first to propose the germ theory, he developed it and conducted experiments that clearly indicated its correctness and managed to convince most of Europe that it was true. Today, he is often regarded as one of the fathers of germ theory. Pasteur also made significant discoveries in chemistry, most notably on the molecular basis for the asymmetry of certain crystals and racemization. Early in his career, his investigation of tartaric acid resulted in the first resolution of what we now call optical isomers. His work led the way to our current understanding of a fundamental principle in the structure of organic compounds. He was the director of the Pasteur Institute, established in 1887, till his death, and his body lies beneath the institute in a vault covered in depictions of his accomplishments in Byzantine mosaics. Although Pasteur made groundbreaking experiments, his reputation became associated with various controversies. Historical reassessment of his notebook revealed that he practiced deception to overcome his rivals. Education and Early Life Louis Pasteur was born on December 27, 1822, in Dole, Jura, France, to a Catholic family of a poor tanner. He was the third child of Jean-Joseph Pasteur and jean Echenette Rocky. The family moved to Marnaz in 1826 and then to Arbois in 1827. Pasteur entered primary school in 1831. He was an average student in his early years, and not particularly academic, as his interests were fishing and sketching. He drew many pastels and portraits of his parents, friends, and neighbors. Pasteur attended secondary school at the College d'Arbois. In October 1838, he left for Paris to join the pension Barbet, but became homesick and returned in November. In 1839, he entered the College Royal de Bassancon to study philosophy and earned his Bachelor of Letters degree in 1840. He was appointed a tutor at the Bassancon College while continuing a degree science course with special mathematics. He failed his first examination in 1841. He managed to pass the Baccalaureate Scientific, General Science, degree in 1842 from Dijon but with a mediocre grade in chemistry. Later in 1842, Pasteur took the entrance test for the École Normale Supérieure. He passed the first set of tests, but because his ranking was low, Pasteur decided not to continue and try again next year. He went back to the pension barbet to prepare for the test. He also attended classes at the Lycée St. Louis and lectures of Jean-Baptiste Dumas at the Sorbonne. In 1843, he passed the test with a high ranking and entered the École Normale Supérieure. In 1845 he received the Licencié ES Sciences, Master of Science, degree. In 1846, he was appointed Professor of Physics at the College de Ternon, now called in Ardèche, but Antoine Jérôme Ballard, one of the discoverers of the element bromine, wanted him back at the École Normale Supérieure as a graduate laboratory assistant, a grich preparateur. He joined Ballard and simultaneously started his research in crystallography and in 1847, 
he submitted his two theses, one in chemistry and the other in physics. After serving briefly as professor of physics at the Dijon Lycée in 1848, he became professor of chemistry at the University of Strasbourg, where he met and courted Marie Laurent, daughter of the university's rector in 1849. They were married on May 29, 1849, and together had five children, only two of whom survived to adulthood, the other three died of typhoid. Career Pasteur was appointed professor of chemistry at the University of Strasbourg in 1848, and became the chair of chemistry in 1852. In 1854, he was named dean of the new faculty of sciences at Lille University, where he began his studies on fermentation. It was on this occasion that Pasteur uttered his oft quoted remark, Dans les champs de l'observation, le hazard en e favorise que les esprits prepares, in the field of observation, chance favors only the prepared mind. In 1857, he moved to Paris as the director of scientific studies at the École Normale Supérieure, where he took control from 1858 to 1867 and introduced a series of reforms to improve the standard of scientific work. The examinations became more rigid, which led to better results, greater competition, and increased prestige. Many of his decrees, however, were rigid and authoritarian leading to two serious student revolts. During the Bean Revolt he decreed that a mutton stew, which students had refused to eat, would be served and eaten every Monday. On another occasion he threatened to expel any student caught smoking, and 73 of the 80 students in the school resigned. In 1863, he was appointed Professor of Geology, Physics and Chemistry at the École Nationale Supérieure des Beaux-Arts a position he held until his resignation in 1867. In 1867, he became the chair of organic chemistry at the Sorbonne, but he later gave up the position because of poor health. In 1867, the École Normale's Laboratory of Physiological Chemistry was created at Pasteur's request and he was the laboratory's director from 1867 to 1888. In Paris, he established the Pasteur Institute in 1887, in which he was its director for the rest of his life. Research Molecular Asymmetry In Pasteur's early work as a chemist, beginning at the École Normale Supérieure, and continuing at Strasbourg and Lille, he examined the chemical, optical and crystallographic properties of a group of compounds known as tartrates. He resolved a problem concerning the nature of tartaric acid, 1848. A solution of this compound derived from living things rotated the plane of polarization of light passing through it. The mystery was that tartaric acid derived by chemical synthesis had no such effect, even though its chemical reactions were identical and its elemental composition was the same. Pasteur noticed that crystals of tartrates had small faces. Then he observed that, in racemic mixtures of tartrates, half of the crystals were right-handed and half were left-handed. Pasteur was able to show not only that optical activity related to the shape of the crystals, but also that an asymmetric internal arrangement of the molecules of the compound was responsible for twisting the light. They, 2R3R, and, 2S3S, tartrates were isometric, non-superposable mirror images of each other. This was the first time anyone had demonstrated molecular chirality, and also the first explanation of isomerism. Some historians consider Pasteur's work in this area to be his most profound and most original contributions to science, and his greatest scientific discovery. Fermentation and Germ Theory of Diseases Pasteur demonstrated that fermentation is caused by the growth of microorganisms, and the emergent growth of bacteria in nutrient broths is due not to spontaneous generation, but rather to biogenesis, omn vivum ex vivo all life from life. He was motivated to investigate the matter while working at Lille. In 1856 a local wine manufacturer, M. Bigot, whose son was one of Pasteur's students, sought for his advice on the problems of making beetroot alcohol and souring. In 1857 he developed his ideas stating that, I intend to establish that, 
just as there is an alcoholic ferment, the yeast of beer, which is found everywhere that sugar is decomposed into alcohol and carbonic acid, so also there is a particular ferment, a lactic yeast, always present when sugar becomes lactic acid. According to his son-in-law, René Valéry Radot, in August 1857 Pasteur sent a paper about lactic acid fermentation to the Société des Sciences de Lille, but the paper was read three months later. In a memoir subsequently published, it was dated November 30, 1857. It was published in full form in 1858. He demonstrated that yeast was responsible for fermentation to produce alcohol from sugar, and that fermentation was not caused by decomposition. He also demonstrated that, when a different microorganism contaminated the wine, lactic acid was produced, making the wine sour. In 1861, Pasteur observed that less fermentation occurred when the yeast was exposed to air. Pasteur's research also showed that the growth of microorganisms was responsible for spoiling beverages, such as beer, wine, and milk. With this established, he invented a process in which liquids such as milk were heated to a temperature between 60 and 100 degrees Celsius. This killed most bacteria and molds already present within them. Pasteur and Claude Bernard completed tests on blood and urine on April 20, 1862. Pasteur patented the process, to fight the diseases of wine, in 1865. The method became known as pasteurization, and was soon applied to beer and milk. Beverage contamination led Pasteur to the idea that microorganisms infecting animals and humans cause disease. He proposed preventing the entry of microorganisms into the human body, leading Joseph Lister to develop antiseptic methods in surgery. Lister's work in turn inspired Joseph Lawrence to develop his own alcohol-based antiseptic, which he named in tribute Listerine. In 1865, two parasitic diseases called pebrin and flatchery were infecting great numbers of silkworms in southern France, causing huge losses to farmers. In 1865, Pasteur went to Ailes and worked for five years until 1870. Silkworms with pebrin were covered in corpuscles. In the first three years, Pasteur thought that the corpuscles resulted from the disease. In 1870, he concluded that the corpuscles were the cause of the disease. Pasteur also showed that the disease was hereditary. Pasteur developed a system to prevent pebrin, after the female moths laid their eggs, the moths were dried and turned into pulp. The pulp was examined with a microscope, and if corpuscles were observed, the eggs were destroyed flatchery could be accidental or hereditary. Hygiene could be used to prevent accidental flatchery. To prevent hereditary flatchery, Pasteur examined the moth's digestive cavity with a microscope, and if the microorganisms causing flatchery were not found, the moths could be used to lay eggs. Spontaneous Generation Following his fermentation experiments, Pasteur demonstrated that the skin of grapes was the natural source of yeasts, and that sterilized grapes and grape juice never fermented. He drew grape juice from under the skin with sterilized needles, and also covered grapes with sterilized cloth. Both experiments could not produce wine in sterilized containers. His findings and ideas were against the prevailing notion of spontaneous generation. He received a particularly stern criticism from Felix Archimede Pouchet, who was director of the Rouen Museum of Natural History. To settle the debate between the eminent scientists, the French Academy of Sciences offered the Alhambert Prize carrying 2,500 francs to whoever could experimentally demonstrate for or against the doctrine. Pouchet believed that air everywhere could generate living organisms. To prove himself correct, Pasteur boiled liquid in flasks and then sealed them. When they were opened, dust entered the flasks, and organisms grew in some of them. The number of flasks in which organisms grew was lower at higher altitudes, showing that air at high altitudes contained less dust and fewer organisms. Pasteur also exposed a fermentable liquid to air in swan neck flasks, with air being admitted via a long curving tube that would make dust particles stick to it. Nothing grew in the broths unless the flasks were tilted, making the liquid touch the walls of the neck. This showed that the living organisms that grew in such broths came from outside as spores on dust, 
rather than spontaneously generating within the liquid or from pure air. This was one of the last and most important experiments disproving the theory of spontaneous generation, for which Pasteur won the Al Humbert Prize in 1862. He concluded that, quote, Never will the doctrine of spontaneous generation recover from the mortal blow of this simple experiment. There is no known circumstance in which it can be confirmed that microscopic beings came into the world without germs, without parents similar to themselves. End of quote. Immunology and Vaccination Chicken Cholera Pasteur's later work on diseases included work on chicken cholera. During this work, a culture of the responsible bacteria had spoiled and failed to induce the disease in some chickens he was infecting with the disease. Upon reusing these healthy chickens, Pasteur discovered he could not infect them, even with fresh bacteria, the weakened bacteria had caused the chickens to become immune to the disease, though they had caused only mild symptoms. His assistant, Charles Chamberlain, of French origin, had been instructed to inoculate the chickens after Pasteur went on holiday. Chamberlain failed to do this, but instead went on holiday himself. On his return, the month-old cultures made the chickens unwell, but instead of the infections being fatal, as they usually were, the chickens recovered completely. Chamberlain assumed an error had been made, and wanted to discard the apparently faulty culture, but Pasteur stopped him. Pasteur guessed the recovered animals now might be immune to the disease, as were the animals at Uri Tilwar that had recovered from anthrax. Anthrax In the 1870s, he applied this immunization method to anthrax, which affected cattle, and aroused interest in combating other diseases. Pasteur cultivated bacteria from the blood of animals infected with anthrax. When he inoculated animals with the bacteria, anthrax occurred, proving that the bacteria was the cause of the disease. Many cattle were dying of anthrax in cursed fields. Pasteur was told that sheep that died from anthrax were buried in the field. Pasteur thought that earthworms might have brought the bacteria to the surface. He found anthrax bacteria in earthworms' excrement, showing that he was correct. He told the farmers not to bury dead animals in the fields. In 1880, Pasteur's rival Jean Joseph Henri Toussaint, a veterinary surgeon, used carbolic acid to kill anthrax bacilli and tested the vaccine on sheep. Pasteur thought that this type of killed vaccine should not work because he believed that attenuated bacteria used up nutrients that the bacteria needed to grow. Pasteur discovered that growing anthrax bacilli at about 42 degrees Celsius made them unable to produce spores. In 1881, he conducted a successful experiment at Poerlielli Fort. He publicly claimed he had made the anthrax vaccine by exposing the bacilli to oxygen. His laboratory notebooks, now in the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris, show that he actually used heat and potassium dichromate, similar to Toussaint's method. The notion of a weak form of a disease causing immunity to the virulent version was not new, this had been known for a long time for smallpox. Inoculation with smallpox, variolation, was known to result in a much less severe disease, and greatly reduced mortality, in comparison with the naturally acquired disease. Edward Jenner had also studied vaccination using cowpox, vaccinia, to give cross immunity to smallpox in the late 1790s, and by the early 1800s vaccination had spread to most of Europe. The difference between smallpox vaccination and anthrax or chicken cholera vaccination was that the weakened form of the latter two disease organisms had been artificially weakened, so a naturally weak form of the disease organism did not need to be found. This discovery revolutionized work in infectious diseases, and Pasteur gave these artificially weakened diseases the generic name of vaccines, in honor of Jenner's discovery. Pasteur produced the first vaccine for rabies by growing the virus in rabbits and then weakening it by drying the affected nerve tissue. In 1876, Robert Cook had shown that Bacillus anthracis caused anthrax. In his papers published between 1878 and 1880, Pasteur only mentioned Cox's work in a footnote. Cook met Pasteur at the 7th International Medical Congress in 1881. A few months later, Cook wrote that Pasteur had used impure cultures and made errors. 
In 1882, Pasteur replied to Cook in a speech, to which Cook responded aggressively. In on the anthrax inoculation, Cook refuted several of Pasteur's conclusions about anthrax and also criticized Pasteur for keeping his methods secret. In 1883, Pasteur wrote that he used cultures prepared in a similar way to his successful fermentation experiments and that Cook misinterpreted statistics. Swine erysipelas In 1882, Pasteur sent his assistant Louis Thuyer to southern France because of an episodic of swine erysipelas. Thuyer identified the bacillus that caused the disease in March 1883. Pasteur and Thuyer increased the bacillus's virulence after passing it through pigeons. Then they passed the bacillus through rabbits, weakening it and obtaining a vaccine. Pasteur and Thuyer incorrectly described the bacterium as a figure eight shape. Rue described the bacterium as stick shaped in 1884. Rabies The rabies vaccine was initially created by Emile Rue, a French doctor and a colleague of Pasteur. Rue had produced a killed vaccine by drying the spinal cords of rabbits infected with rabies. The vaccine had been tested in 50 dogs before its first human trial. This vaccine was first used on nine year old Joseph Meister, on July 6, 1885, after the boy was badly mauled by a rabid dog. His was done at some personal risk for Pasteur, since he was not a licensed physician and could have faced prosecution for treating the boy. After consulting with colleagues, he decided to go ahead with the treatment. Three months later he examined Meister and found that he was in good health. Pasteur was hailed as a hero and the legal matter was not pursued. In 1886, he treated 350 people, of which only one developed rabies. The treatment's success laid the foundations for the manufacture of many other vaccines. The first of the Pasteur Institutes was also built on the basis of this achievement. Legal risk was not the only kind Pasteur undertook. In the story of San Michel, Axel Munth writes of the rabies vaccine research. Quote, Pasteur himself was absolutely fearless. Anxious to secure a sample of saliva straight from the jaws of a rabid dog, I once saw him with the glass tube held between his lips draw a few drops of the deadly saliva from the mouth of a rabid bulldog, held on the table by two assistants, their hands protected by leather gloves. End of quote. Because of his study in germs, Pasteur encouraged doctors to sanitize their hands and equipment before surgery. Prior to this, few doctors or their assistants practiced these procedures. Controversies A French national hero at age 55, in 1878 Pasteur discreetly told his family never to reveal his laboratory notebooks to anyone. His family obeyed and all his documents were held and inherited in secrecy. Finally in 1964 Pasteur's grandson and last surviving male descendant, Pasteur Valéry donated the papers to the French National Library, Bibliothèque Nationale de France. Yet the papers were restricted for historical studies until the death of Valéry in 1971. The documents were given catalogue number only in 1985. In 1995, the centennial of the death of Louis Pasteur, a historian of science Gerald L. Geisen published an analysis of Pasteur's private notebooks in his The Private Science of Louis Pasteur, and declared that Pasteur had given several misleading accounts and played deceptions in his most important discoveries. Max Peretz published a defense of Pasteur in the New York Review of Books. Based on further examinations of Pasteur's documents, French immunologist Patrice Debra concluded in his book Louis Pasteur, 1998, that in spite of his genius, Pasteur had some faults. A book review states that Debra sometimes finds him unfair, combative, arrogant, unattractive in attitude, inflexible and even dogmatic. Fermentation Scientists before Pasteur had studied fermentation. In the 1830s, Charles Canyard Latour Friedrich Traugott Kutzing and Theodor Schwann used microscopes to study yeasts and concluded that yeasts were living organisms. In 1839 Justice von Liebig, Friedrich Wohler and Johns Jacob Berzelius stated that yeast was not an organism and was produced when air acted on plant juice. In 1855, Antoine Béchamp, professor of chemistry at the University of Montpellier, 
conducted experiments with sucrose solutions and concluded that water was the factor for fermentation. He changed his conclusion in 1858, stating that fermentation was directly related to the growth of molds, which required air for growth. He regarded himself as the first to show the role of microorganisms in fermentation. Pasteur started his experiments in 1857 and published his findings in 1858, April issue of Comptes Rendus Chimie, Beauchamp's paper appeared in January issue. Beauchamp noted that Pasteur did not bring any novel idea or experiments. On the other hand, Beauchamp was probably aware of Pasteur's 1857 preliminary works. With both scientists claiming priority on the discovery, a dispute, extending to several areas, lasted throughout their lives. However, Beauchamp was on the losing side, as the BMJ obituary remarked, his name was associated with bygone controversies as to priority which it would be unprofitable to recall. Beauchamp proposed the incorrect theory of microzymes. According to K. L. Manchester, anti-vivisectionists and proponents of alternative medicine promoted Beauchamp and microzymes unjustifiably claiming that Pasteur plagiarized Beauchamp. Pasteur and Beauchamp believed that fermentation was exclusively cellular activity, that is, it was only due to living cells. But later extraction of enzymes such as invertase by Marcelin Berthelot in 1860 showed that it was simply an enzymatic reaction. Anthrax Vaccine Pasteur had given a misleading account of the preparation of the anthrax vaccine used in the experiment at Poerly Fort. The fact is that Pasteur publicly claimed his success in developing anthrax vaccine in 1881. However, his admirer turned rival Toussaint was the one who developed the first vaccine. Toussaint isolated the gram negative bacteria Cholera des Pools, later named to add irony Pastorella in honor of Pasteur in 1879 and gave samples to Pasteur who used them for his own works. In 1880 with his publishing on July 12 at the French Academy of Sciences, Toussaint presented his successful result with an attenuated vaccine against anthrax in dogs and sheep. Pasteur purely on grounds of jealousy contested the discovery by publicly displaying his vaccination method in Poerly Fort on May 5, 1881. The promotional experiment was a success and helped Pasteur sell his products, getting all the benefits and glory. Experimental Ethics Pasteur experiments are often cited as against medical ethics, especially on his vaccination of Meister. Firstly, he did not have any experience in medical practice, and more importantly, a medical license. This is often cited as a serious threat to his professional and personal reputation. Even his closest partner Emile Roux refused to participate in the unjust clinical trial. However, Pasteur executed vaccination of the boy under the close watch of practicing physicians Jacques-Joseph Grandcher, head of the pediatric clinic at Paris Children's Hospital, and Alfred Volpian. He was even not allowed to hold the syringe, although the inoculations were entirely under his supervision. It was Grandcher who was responsible for the injections, and defended Pasteur before the French National Academy of Medicine in the issue. Still, under normal medical procedures, giving someone a clinical test without proper diagnosis was unjustifiable. Meister had not shown symptoms of rabies at the time. However, by the time symptoms appear, death is almost certain, even today. Secondly, he kept secrecy of his procedure and did not give proper preclinical trials. But these accusations were not entirely correct. He disclosed his methods to a small group of scientists. Before using it in humans, he had successfully vaccinated 50 rabid dogs. According to Geisen, Pasteur's laboratory notebooks show that he had vaccinated only 11 dogs. Awards and Honors Pasteur was awarded 1,500 francs in 1,853 by the Pharmaceutical Society for the Synthesis of Racemic Acid. In 1,856 the Royal Society of London presented him the Rumford Medal for his discovery of the nature of racemic acid and its relations to polarized light, and the Copley Medal in 1,874 for his work on fermentation. He was elected a foreign member of the Royal Society, four members, in 1869. 
The French Academy of Sciences awarded him the Montaigne Prizes in 1859 for experimental physiology, and the Jecker Prize in 1861 and the Al Humbert Prize in 1862 for his experimental refutation of spontaneous generation. Though he lost election in 1857 for membership to the French Academy of Sciences, he won it in 1862 in mineralogy section. He was elected to permanent secretary of the physical science section of the academy in 1887 and held the position until 1889. In 1873 he was elected to the Académie Nationale de Médecine. In 1881 he was elected to a seat at the Académie Française left vacant by Littre. Pasteur received the Albert Medal from the Royal Society of Arts in 1882. In 1883 he became foreign member of the Royal Netherlands Academy of Arts and Sciences. In 1873 he was made the commander in the Brazilian Order of the Rose. Pasteur won the Leeuwenhoek Medal, Microbiology's highest Dutch honor in arts and sciences, in 1895. Both the Institut Pasteur and University Louis Pasteur were named after him. He was made a Chevalier of the Legion of Honor in 1853, promoted to officer in 1863, to commander in 1868, to grand officer in 1878 and made a Grand Cross of the Legion of Honor in 1881. On June 8, 1886, the Ottoman Sultan Abdul Hamid II awarded Pasteur with the Order of the Mejidi, I class, and 10,000 Ottoman Liras. Legacy In many localities worldwide, streets are named in his honor. For example, in the USA, Palo Alto and Irvine, California, Boston and Polk, Florida, adjacent to the University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio, Jonquier, Quebec, San Salvador de Jujuy and Buenos Aires, Argentina, Great Yarmouth in Norfolk, in the United Kingdom, Jericho and Woolgaroo in Queensland, Australia, Phnom Penh in Cambodia, Ho Chi Minh City, Batna in Algeria, Bandung in Indonesia, Tehran in Iran, near the central campus of the Warsaw University in Warsaw, Poland. Adjacent to the Odessa State Medical University in Odessa, Ukraine, Milan in Italy and Bucharest, Cluj-Napoca and Timioara in Romania. The Avenue Pasteur in Saigon, Vietnam, is one of the few streets in that city to retain its French name. Avenue Louis Pasteur in the Longwood Medical and Academic Area in Boston, Massachusetts was named in his honor in the French manner with Avenue preceding the name of the dedicatee. The schools Lycée Pasteur in neuilly sur seine France, and Lycée Louis Pasteur in Calgary, Canada, are named after Pasteur. In South Africa, the Louis Pasteur Private Hospital in Pretoria, and Life Louis Pasteur Private Hospital, Bloemfontein, are named after him. Louis Pasteur University Hospital in Kois, Slovakia is also named after Pasteur. His statue is erected at San Rafael High School in San Rafael, California. A bronze bust of Pasteur resides on the French campus of Kaiser Permanente's San Francisco Medical Center in San Francisco. The sculpture was designed by Harriet G. Moore and cast in 1984 by Artworks Foundry. The UNESCO Institute Pasteur Medal was created on the centenary of Pasteur's death, and is given every two years in his name, in recognition of outstanding research contributing to a beneficial impact on human health. Pasteur Institute After developing the rabies vaccine, Pasteur proposed an institute for the vaccine. In 1887, Fundraising for the Pasteur Institute began, with donations from many countries. The official statute was registered in 1887, stating that the Institute's purposes were the treatment of rabies according to the method developed by M. Pasteur and the study of virulent and contagious diseases. The Institute was inaugurated on November 14, 1888. He brought together scientists with various specialties. The first five departments were directed by two Normalens, graduates of the École Normale Superieure Émile Duclos, General Microbiology Research, and Charles Chamberland, Microbe Research Applied to Hygiene, as well as a biologist, 
Eli Mechnikov, Morphological Microbe Research, and two physicians, Jacques Joseph Grandcher, Rabies, and Emile Roux, Technical Microbe Research. One year after the inauguration of the Institute, Roux set up the first course of microbiology ever taught in the world, then entitled Course de MICROB Technique, Course of Microbe Research Techniques. Since 1891 the Pasteur Institute had been extended to different countries, and currently there are 32 institutes in 29 countries in various parts of the world. Personal Life Faith and Spirituality His grandson, Louis Pasteur Valéry Radot, wrote that Pasteur had only kept from his Catholic background a spiritualism without religious practice although Catholic observers often said Louis Pasteur remained throughout his whole life an ardent Christian, and his son-in-law, in a biography of Louis Pasteur, writes, quote, Absolute faith in God and in eternity, and a conviction that the power for good given to us in this world will be continued beyond it, were feelings which pervaded his whole life, the virtues of the gospel had ever been present to him. Full of respect for the form of religion which had been that of his forefathers, he came simply to it and naturally for spiritual help in these last weeks of his life. End of quote. Maurice Valéry Radot, grandson of the brother of the son-in-law of Pasteur and outspoken Catholic, also holds that Pasteur fundamentally remained Catholic. According to both Pasteur Valéry Radot and Maurice Valéry Radot, the following well-known quotation attributed to Pasteur is apocryphal, the more I know, the more nearly is my faith that of the Breton peasant. Could I but know all I would have the faith of a Breton peasant's wife. According to Maurice Valéry Radot, the false quotation appeared for the first time shortly after the death of Pasteur. However, despite his belief in God, it has been said that his views were that of a freethinker rather than a Catholic, a spiritual more than a religious man. He was also against mixing science with religion. Death In 1868, Pasteur suffered a stroke that paralyzed the left side of his body, but he recovered. A stroke or uremia in 1894 severely impaired his health. Failing to fully recover, he died on September 28, 1895, near Paris. He was given a state funeral and was buried in the Cathedral of Notre Dame, but his remains were reinterred in a crypt in the Pasteur Institute in Paris, where the crypt is engraved with his works. Publications. Pastor's principal published works are